Hello, it's Soul. In a recent interview Tally did with designer Paul Cubitt, Paul revealed that the pacing of Torghast runs is still being discussed, but from the sounds of it, Blizzard is going to lean heavily into pacing how often you can run the Endless Dungeon. I think that players should have the opportunity to run Torghast as much as they want, whenever they want. And in this video that's more like audio, I'm going to convince you, the viewer and Blizzard, why. This is one of those, you know, cut to the chase sorts of videos, so let's just get started. First off, Torghast is going to be a thing for presumably the entire Shadowlands expansion, just like Islands and Warfronts were for Battle for Azeroth. Islands could be run forever, much to the detriment of some, but for most island participants their time was limited to filling up that island bar and then getting a reward, as an artifact power and a treasure mission. Warfronts could also be run forever, at least when they were up, but there were different stages of Warfronts, the Siege, the Patrol, and the Gathering of Resources. In fewer words, rewards were capped, but running the actual content, not so much. So why the inconsistency? Why shouldn't Torghast be a thing that we can simply walk into whenever it's available? It could be that, as Paul suggests, Torghast will use some sort of flow where you go to use a key to get into the dungeon, and then to get the key you need to run some zone content in the Maw, but the zone content can only be run once per day, but you can extend the zone content by doing some extra stuff like, like holy crap, that's potentially a lot of work. When you step back and try to wave the flag of alt-friendliness that Ian was sporting so hard back at BlizzCon, uh, you're gonna find that flag is on fire. I think it'll be difficult to sustain that sort of flow per alt, and after so much has been learned in the unofficial 8.3.5 patch, I speak for a certain group of players when I say we just want to play. Attunements were a one-time thing. Completing the questline to unlock Warfront questlines was also a one-time thing. Loot locking is a different beast, and one that we've come to accept because it strikes a balance between allowing us to play on the characters we want with making sure that we can't just farm for gear off of the same content endlessly. It's been going on for a while in raid and dungeon content, it's a thing in horrific vision content, so I'd presume that it can and should be a thing in Torghast, so we can keep playing it if we want to without Blizzard worrying about us gaining a tangible advantage. One thing I don't like so much about Horrific Visions was that if I wanted to play with friends, I had to think twice. Once to ask myself, do I want to run with a group? And then a second thought to remind myself that I only have one more key I can get this week, why would I want to do it in a group when I'd rather just rely on myself? Putting my selfishness aside though, having that extra barrier to prevent running Torghast with friends and comrades is going to cause some friction. Again, consider that Torghast isn't just patch content, it's the big gameplay feature of Shadowlands. Like, hey dude, let's go run Torghast, guys. Oh, you can't because you ran out of keys. That really sucks. That really does suck, Blizzard. I'd rather not be put into that sort of situation. Blizzard has said that Horrific Visions aren't like Torghast, so unlike Horrific Visions, Torghast shouldn't need a key. It's more than that, though. Horrific Visions was made of two maps with affixes to mix things up a little bit, but by and large, with every run, our performance would improve. Not entirely because we got more gear, but because we learned the instance, the layout, the enemy behavior, the mask affixes, on top of the research that would slowly inch us closer to godlike performance. But I could run numerous Torghast attempts, and each one would be different. There are things that I would learn, like mob behavior, but in Torghast the powers could change, like the layout, the composition, density and placement of mob packs, and so much more. In his interview with Sloot, Ian said that they don't want players to feel like they're going in for practice so that when they go on the real runs that actually count, they won't do poorly. But practice doesn't get you very far in Torghast. In one run, your powers might steer you into a Maw Rat build, while another run will have you amass Phantasma, while another run still has you play a tank role as a mage. The reason why alpha testers have been jumping back into Torghast again and again isn't practice really, but more like discovery. Like ooh, what kind of synergies can I come up with this time from the powers that roll? Learning how the many, many anima powers work does take some learning, but repeated runs only help you understand so much. 
So I disagree with Ian on this front. I think that in some respects, many of us, including I, have tied gameplay to rewards like they're separate things. Sometimes gameplay itself is the reward. However, Torghast is more than just a monster-killing sandbox. It's a place with rewards, we just don't know what they are yet, and Blizzard is trying to sell the idea of the Maw and Torghast as really dangerous places. To be fair, I at least want to see what they intend to do before I pass judgment, but if Blizzard intends for there to be a direct relationship between the Maw and Torghast, here's what I propose. 1. Torghast can be entered at any time. Done. Two. Torghast will have two different states. It's going to have an inactive state that doesn't yield any major rewards, so no one but masochists and fun seekers will go in. The other state is one that gives access to whatever the heck rewards Blizzard is talking about, from legendaries to gear or whatever. The point is, regardless of what phase Torghast is in, players can go in at any time. For the sake of pacing, weekly loot logs or currency caps with catch-ups can manage the reward structure. But how does Torghast change phases? It can be as simple as it changing phases every few days on a fixed timer, or a contribution meter like the Mage Tower and Warfronts. Meanwhile, the Maw can change slightly to reflect this phase. It's going to be similar to how Warfront phases change from Siege to Patrol to Contribution. But you might be thinking, oh, but Sol, you jerk, I still have a job. And the Torghast schedule all but ensures that I'll be screwed out of most of those unlimited Torghast runs. So how about a compromise? Let's still provide a way to obtain keys to activate those more rewarding Torghast runs, no matter what day it is. Now, is this elegant? No, of course not, I'm not a game designer. But Blizzard wanted some input, and here it is. Now, I'd love to hear what you think of this idea, and if you want more freedom to run Torghast, hey, share this video or highlights of it with others. But now's the time for a discussion, so please leave a comment below with your thoughts, and that's going to be it for today. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe for more of this and all things Warcraft. We'll see you next time. Until then, stay safe, stay healthy, and stay breezy.